Hello, and welcome to this brand new webinar featuring Shock Director of Enterprise Good Quality, Mark Levine. Mark will be covering how to build quality focused partnerships in your print supply chain. My name is Stephanie Krieger, and I'll be your moderator for today. Before we get started, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items. This webinar is interactive, so we encourage you to submit questions at any time during the presentation using the questions box in your GoToWebinar control panel. We will be monitoring the questions and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. We will also record this webinar for future viewing and we'll send out a link to the recording in the coming weeks. Please join in on the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Brandsquare. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Mark. Thank you so much. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on uh, discussing print quality, uh, print quality focused partnerships and how how to build them in the supply chain. Uh, my name is Mark Levine. I'm the Director of Enterprise Print Quality for Shaw. Uh, we work with our brand partners managing print quality programs. If you've ever heard the name Color Drive, that's what our uh, commercialized name is. So we deploy um, programs for, for both CPGs and retail customers. Uh, I've been in print about 20 years. It goes by fast. And uh, I'm very plugged into standards. The standards group based out of the US uh, called Idea Alliance. You may have heard of G7. They own the equity behind G7. So I sit on a committee there called the Print Properties Committee, and we basically work together to set best practices for the industry. This goes across multiple verticals in print, including packaging. But it gives us a nice cross-section view of, of discipline across all types of print. And I myself am certified. I'm a G7 process control expert. So uh, I try to walk the walk and stay engaged with printers so that uh, we can sort of design our programs to align with industry practice. Uh, the business that we have, we've got a number of customers that we've been very successful uh, with. You can see a few of those customers listed here. Uh, we started this program in 2002, right? We certainly started small, uh, but the business has grown incrementally, so it's been, um, it's been a great business for us, and we're really passionate about print quality. What we do for these customers is we provide uh, a few things, right? We provide a web-based platform. It's an open platform to help those brands collect data and drive those print quality focused relationships I'll talk about today. We educate and train. So, you know, anytime you uh, connect with a print supplier and engage them with a program, there has to be a training piece, right? Everyone's got to know how to participate, how to win. So we get involved with that and we make sure that all the players have all the tools and uh, education and knowledge they need to, to win in a program. We do something called monitoring. So we see a lot of this happening in the industry today. Uh, print suppliers are sending us samples. We're measuring it. We're loading data into the system. Uh, we're also um, conducting PQ leadership. So data, you know, on its own doesn't really do anything. You really want to have a dialogue around that data. Identify opportunities to improve your process. So we we'll lead those discussions with suppliers and with the brand to help identify those opportunities where the process can change, uh, can change and improve and deliver a better result. And we do special projects like shelf auditing. You know, some suppliers uh, or, or brand customers will ask us to gauge, uh, do, shop a store, right? Look at our shelf set, uh, and not only their shelf set, but we can also uh, collect competitive shelf sets and do analysis not only your brand within itself, but uh, your brand across the entire shelf in competition with other brands. So those are just some of the things we do uh, in the color drive business. Today we're here to talk about print quality focused partnerships, a relationship that a brand has or a retailer, you know, with the supplier who's providing them the print. And in the case of a retailer, this is a relationship with a finished goods supplier who is working with a, a printer. Um, in the case of a consumer product group or a consumer product company, this is oftentimes a direct relationship between the, the printer and the brand owner. Right? You're going to see PQ in the presentation. Uh, it's really just an abbreviation of print quality. Uh, I just thought I'd hide that in case it wasn't clear. So some of these things are, are, uh, are, are common to the, the scope of customers that we service. So chances are if these things resonate with you, then you know, you're interested in having a peak focus relationship uh, with your suppliers. The first key struggle that we see is uh, realizing design intent. Design intent is kind of your vision, is the brand's vision of how a product is going to live on shelf. 
and brands invest a lot of money in uh, creating a design that realizes their vision, it captures the spirit of what they want to say with that product. But a lot of times that product winds up on shelf and it's not what everyone hoped it would be. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, right? And it can be an inconsistent process and that's part of it. So if you find yourself with challenges realizing design intent consistently on shelf, then you know, you're interested in having a PQ focused partnership. If you'd like to have more transparency to data, this is something that every one of the brands that we've engaged, uh, they've all kind of highlighted that this was important to them. So, you know, data is out there. Your print suppliers are producing, you know, every for you, and are however, however often they produce. And they're collecting measurements that you never see. So how do you get access to the data? How do you start to have a conversation about that data? So that's what, you know, a print quality program, to do, uh, print quality program can do. It kind of gives you transparency or visibility to that data so you can make it a conversation. Another thing that's sort of common across customers is uh, they want to affect uh, improvement. They want to affect change in their process. If they see an issue, they want to characterize that issue and address it. Right? So a lot of times um, there's no time to really troubleshoot anything. That's one of the problems with print quality in a supply chain. Uh, you got you got to get product to the shelf, right? The the packaging has to ship out out of the print supplier. It's very difficult to stop these things, and you have a very narrow window to sort of improve the way that process works. So having the data in hand gives you the opportunity to act quickly and actually affect change in your supply chain, so that you can continue to improve and drive better performance on shelf. So I wanted to characterize what is a print quality focus relationship for the group here attending this call. Um, I think the number one um, number one way to characterize it is sort of an alignment of vision. A lot of times a print supplier provides the product company with a sample, right? And the print supplier genuinely believes that the sample meets their requirements. Right? And by the measures that have been prescribed to them, it does. Right? Yet, when the brand gets that, uh, they look at the, you know, they look at the product and sort of gauge it against their expectation, gauge it against the proof, and it's unacceptable. Right? So there's a gap. There's a gap in understanding, a gap in, uh, uh, in this alignment of vision, how the printer is looking at your work and how the brand is looking at the work. So part of the print quality focus, uh, is aligning the way those two parties see the product, right? If the brand and the printer see the product the same way, you know, print quality starts to fade in the rearview mirror, hopefully, right? Another um, another uh, key aspect of a PQ focused partnership is a commitment to collect data, right? You're not going to have a print quality data driven relationship without data, right? Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, so there has to be a commitment to collect it and to review it, both from the printer, right? It's got to be credible data, and the printer really needs to look at the data and interact with it, but the brand does too, right? From a, from a brand sort of quality ownership perspective, if you're not looking at the data, some respect and kind of socializing that and sort of recognizing the value of that, that's kind of, um, that's a sort of threat to the, you know, ongoing success of your program. If you're looking at the data and interacting with the data, you know, it doesn't mean it has to be your only job, but uh, the brand's interaction with the data is a big part of a print quality focused partnership and the success of a program. Right? Another thing you want to ask yourself too is uh, what's the commitment to act? Right? If I'm a brand and I've gotten bad data, or data I shouldn't say bad, right, uh, but out of specification data from a print supplier for three months in a row, what am I going to do about it, right? Am I ready to you know, prescribe a different behavior? Am I ready to set up conditions? So in sort of planning, if you're interested in a, a print quality focused partnership, think about what you want to do with the data and set a course so that's on your roadmap and as you as your programs sort of evolve you kind of get to the space where you can use the data the way you want to use it right that's critical to the whole process right and finally it's a, it's a commitment to partner to 
do. Um, what we see is we're on the phone a lot with brands, uh, the principal is on the phone, and we're all kind of talking about the data that we've seen, right? And sometimes there's opportunities to improve, but there's commercial aspects of it. So I can't underscore enough how valuable it is that the printer has the ear of the brand and they're involved in that discussion. So the brand can hear the printer's challenges and you can kind of work through a reasonable process to affect that improvement. Sometimes improvements can happen right away. Sometimes it's over a longer haul. You know, you need to consider that when new work comes up for bid. But just really understanding, you know, each side, the printer understanding the brand and the brand understanding the printer through this program really helps you have a different kind of relationship where print quality can play a larger role. So let's talk a little bit more about aligning your vision. Right? Aligning the vision has to do with something called a spec. If, you've, uh, if you're interested in print quality, you've probably heard this before. Right? And so what a specification is, is uh, it's a set of criteria and tolerances. Like what are you going to measure and how good does it have to be? Right? And you can see a list of things here of, that you could measure. You can measure the color of your solid inks. Right? You could measure gray balance. That's a popular one these days. The more things you measure, the more complete your view is of print quality and the better you can align the way the printer sees the print quality versus the way the brand sees the print quality. Right? But there's complexities involved, involved here. You don't want to have a discussion where you're talking about 10 different things. It's supposed to be an unmanageable discussion, right? But you do need a specification, right? Specifications set a clear performance guideline for the printer, right? So we'll talk about how you can make this better. This is just sort of an example here. Uh, I'm a big Apple fan. I'm revealing a little bit about myself here. So in the 2000s, I think it was, they ran this I'm a Mac campaign. So you see the, you know, casual guy and he's a Mac. And you see the PC guy in his coat there. And this actual ad was the comparison of a Mac movie on the right with a PC movie on the left, right? And you can see that there's some differences here. Um, but my point in including this is about specifications, right? Because there are certain things about these two uh, movies, if you will. Uh, this could also be a, a press sheet and proof, if you will. Uh, there are certain things about these two that match. Right, the dress is kind of the same material, the hair is kind of the same color, right? So if the material being a match is sort of equivalent to your solid ink color matching, okay, we passed on that, right? But when you look at the two, it's very easy to discern that there's a, you know, there's a pretty big difference. So the point is a good specification is going to, you know, accommodate all the criteria that ensures that the press sheet is going to match the proof, right? So, and there's, if you want to read more about specifications, I encourage you to kind of um, to to pursue that. You know, there's lots of uh, resources available for you online. There's ISO standards that cover every part of the process you want to cover. Um, process control for printing, uh, how to measure color, what kind of lighting should I use to view my um, my proofs and my press sheets uh, if I'm printing across multiple technologies. So ISO standards are out there. They're pay for standards, but if it's meaningful to your organization, you know, consider going to ISO.org and, and collecting a set of standards uh, for your own sort of um, knowledge and depth. So the way to really address this, so let's say that you identify a number of things that you want to track. What you can do is you can sort of roll all that up into a single value that is commonly referred to as a score, right? In this case, this is a what we call scoring set that one of our suppliers uses. And this particular supplier is having, uh, or, excuse me, client is having all their print suppliers track solid color. That's the Delta E100. Uh, they're tracking the dot area, right? This is helps your photography look great, right? If your dot area is off, then your photography can have a color bias, shadows can be blocked up, gradations don't look right. Just in general, the image doesn't look like you intended it to. It's a big part of the design intent. So dot area tracking, registration, obviously if it's not in register, big impact on color and stability uh, on your print run. And visual, visual is something that we can actually uh, calibrate and and uh, quantify, we can look at the press sheet versus the proof, and we can look at 
the defects and how clean the print is, and we can give that a number. And we can take that and roll it all up, and you can, and the print can say to you, you know, when you say, well, how's your print quality this month? They can say, well, I'm a four, right? And that can mean something to you, right? You need to know your scale. In this case, one to five, four is pretty good. If your scale is one to 10, uh, then four is not so good, right? So this is all part of the process, is setting up what's all the stuff you want to measure? And then how can I roll all that up and have one number that tells me how you're doing? And then once you have that one number, now you're in shape to start collecting lots of data and start seeing improvement, detecting where there's opportunity uh, to do better. Right, so as an example, you know, this is the type of trend you look at, right? This blue line is you know, how the printer is doing in their overall score over a period of time. This happens to be 12 months. Right? And these other lines are some of the component scores. If you want to get into the nitty gritty of all those specifications, uh, you can certainly do that. Like one of these, as you can see the legend on the bottom, there's a TBI score in there and there's a Delta E score in there. So you can get into the, you know, this or the that. But really, you know, you can see that solid blue line and track how the printer is uh, performing over time and give the printer a way to demonstrate their ability to kind of improve their process uh, for the brand. Right, so we talked about specifications, having a, you know, what am I tracking? Making sure you sort of align that vision so that the printer is seeing the same thing that the brand is. We rolled it up to a score so you have a language and you can ease that discussion and start making quality part of that relationship. Uh, we talked about before the need this commitment to measure, right? And so that piece, um, what we do for that piece is we built a platform. Right, it's called Color Drive. It's a web-based tool, and it collects data from lots of different uh, third-party tools. It's actually an open platform. Any third-party, you know, provider can connect to it. So this is a big part of your process. How are you going to get the data? So as a brand, you need to consider, you know, if you want that data that the supplier is, you know, measuring themselves, that should go on your roadmap. Typically, you know, brands start up and they have print suppliers sending samples to. Uh, calibrated um, lab where data can we could start up fast and get data in there but just in terms of planning your print quality relationship just think about who's going to collect the data right what data are they going to collect right you have all the specification data how often are they going to collect it is it going to be every roll are they working with inline you know if it's roll to roll or if I'm working with sheets what what will my expectations be uh, how, how am I going to maintain calibration? Maybe you want to collect data from two points, the supplier and a calibrated lab, just to make sure that the integrity of the data is high. right? And also, when you're thinking about this process, and I'll mention this a couple of times, consider what the print supplier is doing already. A lot of print suppliers have programs like this that they're using, and it's best to, to sort of you know, understand that as best you can and integrate where possible with what they're already doing. Right? The print supplier is going to appreciate that, and it's more in line with what the brand wants. The brand ultimately wants the supplier to produce more efficiently for less cost, so you can get better quality for less price. Right? So that doesn't work if the printer is already sort of juggling four or five print quality systems, and you're asking them to do another one. You, know, you need to sort of approach the printer with a high level of sensitivity and understand that you know, do your best to make your program extensible and compatible with what the industry is doing. So again, I would you know look for uh, in your partners that you that are going to uh, help you execute on this kind of initiative. Look for certified labs with standardized processes. The people that are doing these things well probably have some established uh, programs and protocols to make this work consistently across all the suppliers you want to work with. Again, consider tools and practices by the printer. Um, I wanted to mention this too. A lot of brands have asked us about can I collect samples from my plant. Right, um, which seems like a it seems like a valuable opportunity, and we hear a lot of feedback from plants that they're spotting color issues. But uh, I tell you, what we find is once you solve the problems of print quality upstream, the sort of desire and urgency to kind of do this at a plant level, you know, tends to diminish. It's a very you know, print quality is sort of is a specialized function. You got specialized tools, specialized lighting, and typically at the plants, you know, there's plenty to do without doing that particular function. But we have customers who continue to be interested in and we're, we're working with them to make that happen. 
So again, we talked about maintaining calibration. You know, uh, from our system, what we would do is uh, if you had a set of data from a supplier and you had a set of data from the lab, we'd actually make two uh, what we call scorecards, right? And you can look at them side by side and gauge, you know, if the instrumentation is matching, uh, if the visual is matching, right? If you're doing a visual score, you want to have a dialogue with kind of a calibration party to make sure that those visual scores stay consistent across all your suppliers. If if any of you have used a color measurement device, you know that you know every day when you use that device, you sort of drop it down on this special tile and that calibrates it. So when visual is a part of your process, you need kind of a tile that can help you identify differences and results that calibrate the way visual is done so that you know suppliers can be consistent from you know job to job and also across all suppliers. Right in this process, we look at all different methodologies, instrumentation, grading disciplines, that kind of thing. All right. Finally, we're kind of getting into the home stretch. We have a couple of pictures at the end here, and I see that we're uh, we're getting close to time. Um, technology changes. Right next year. Um, you may be dealing with a different mix. Suppliers may bring in new technologies to produce. They may bring in new technologies to measurement. So just consider that in the program that you put forth. You don't want to sort of lock it down to a specific set of instruments, right? You want to make it specification based so that no matter what technology is available in the market, you can sort of extend across all the technologies your suppliers have available. Uh, open platforms can help you do this, right? That's what an open platform will plug into any new technology. And uh, if if you can kind of interchange your suppliers and your suppliers can interchange technology, then this great effort that you've made to get a print quality program going over you know, year one, year two, this can continue. It can be extensible into your ongoing future. You can really make that part of your culture. Again, suppliers may already be using multiple sets of tools. Be weary, right? We hear this a lot from printers, and uh, you know we're sensitive to it. We recommend people be sensitive to it. And again, at the end of the day, the suppliers get the best results with the tools they prefer. Supplier has to make a commercial investment. They're going to look at the specs of tools and also the business relationship with their technology provider. All that plays a role, and you know we recommend letting the supplier choose the technology they want. So again, when, once you have all this data, and I've got some screens that kind of go to this, I'll just kind of tiptoe through those quickly. You can look at, you know, it's about driving improvement at the supplier, but you can look at printer versus printer. You can look at brand versus brand. You can have all this data that it doesn't just drive the relationship that you have with your supplier, but it helps you innovate and in packaging more effectively because it kind of gets print quality out of the way. You could start to understand what are the challenges with you and the brands and the colors you're specifying and does one kind of art work better than another kind of art, right? Is one, you know, business unit in my company doing no better than another from a print quality perspective and why? Start to use the data to break those things down, right? And again, um, drive disciplines, consistent disciplines across all your product, uh, across all your suppliers. So you have a couple of views. You know, we said before you want to roll everything up to a score. So this is a chart. Well, you see some scores, right? This this uh, client has 53 printers in this view, uh, and here's all 53 of them over 12 months. And you can see they're trying to get a five on the right is 392. That's pretty good. Right on the left is 286. That's not as good. Why? Right here, you can drill into the data. You can have the discussion with the supplier. And you can find out if there's a commercial challenge in the way. Is it an awareness challenge? You fix it. How do you get it there? Right, this is a, another view. It's the same sort of range of data, but it's a trend. It shows over a period of time how is any one of those bars doing, right? You see three trends that are kind of starting slightly lower on the left, right? The white one's at 2.5, the pink one's at 3, the green one's at 4, and they're all going up about half a point, right? The white one goes up to 3, uh, the pink one goes up to 3.5, and the, the 4 is headed up to 4.5. This is typically what you see in a program, and what you can expect if you're diligent working with suppliers, identifying opportunities to improve. Right? Another view, this is brand against brand, right? So without getting into the nuances of how to read the chart, you know, you can see if I'm in the green, right? We have a green area, you can set up a tolerance. The platform can show you sort of where I am relative to where I want to be. 
and the object here is to get all these boxes into the green area, right? So by brand, I could say this brand's in, this brand's out, that sort of thing. This happens to be seven, seven different brands uh, done over six months. So you can run, run these reports lots of different ways you'll have it. Uh, for our system and, and what's becoming popular in the, in the industry is this what's called a scorecard. This is the thing that you're making, right? So when you hear scorecard system, that's what this is about, right? Everything's typically color coded. You can see the reds, red's bad, right? Green's good, right? The, typically with any of these systems, the more green you see, the better. The more red you see, the worse. And again, use these tools to kind of dialogue between your print quality provider uh, and your print supplier and your team. All right, so I've given you a, a lot of information in a short amount of time, and I probably haven't left enough time for questions, but you know, what can you do next? Learn the rest of the story, right? If you're interested, pursue it. Reach out to partners that you're working with that know about this stuff, get their perspectives. Explore your own organization internally, see if you can garner support to drive initiatives like this uh, forward, and stay focused on print quality, right? It can be great if you collect data and you make that part of your relationship. And that's all I've got for you today. Thanks, Mark. And now we'll open it up for questions. Please put your questions into your control panel now. OK, we've got our first question here. Uh, are brands rolling out print quality to every supplier? or just some, right? So a lot of brands we work with, this is a great question. So a lot of the brands we work with, they have, you know, once they sort of recognize the appetite to improve quality, they just want to do it with everyone. But that the brands we work with have a lot of suppliers. So what a supplier will typically do is pick, you know, a small subset that's going to show them that the program works and delivers value as we work with those suppliers to demonstrate the benefits and demonstrate results, then you know, typically we see brands rolling this out to more and more printers over the life of the program. All right, we got another one here. Um, who's involved uh, with the program on the brand side? Uh, marketing, procurement, design. Uh, I think uh, that's, a, that's Another good question, you know, I think um, there's an interest in all parties in quality. Once people know that your print is being watched and measured, you know, people want to be sort of involved in it or they want some awareness of it. Uh, design will certainly have uh, some perspective as you're managing design intent all the way to shelf. Marketing will have some input. But typically, where we see most of the activities on the procurement side, right? It's the procurement team that's typically interfacing with printers saying, you know, sort of having that discussion about what's your performance and what am I buying and am, am I getting, you know, uh, are you delivering on the dollars that I'm paying? So a lot of times um, print, the print procurement uh, teams will sort of educate themselves in this space and they'll sort of drive those discussions. But it could be anybody. It really depends on your organization. I have another question here. Um, do I need to single source pre-press to make a print quality program work? I would say uh, no. No, I mean, we're working with um, multiple pre-press or pre-media partners. Um, we work with some large customers that have an array of different providers. And they actually, you know, in, in our case, they'll use our platform that we built. And we'll educate the other partners on how to operate the program give them a place to put their data in a common way to dialogue with a consumer product company, although it's really different teams that are out there interfacing with the different suppliers. I see another one here. Uh, how do you set uh, the target for the supplier? So um, I, th I think this means, uh, I think this means with respect to color standards, you know, because you're going to be measuring the suppliers. So with respect to color standards, uh, you want to, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can run to ISO standards. You can, ISO sort of publishes characterization data that you can ask your suppliers to hit. A lot of times we're working with fingerprint data. So you've done a run with a supplier and you want a very specific condition that you can hold them to. So on their process color work, there's typically a fingerprint. 
And then for spot colors, we do a mix of things. We work with references from Pantone. We work with references from Pantone Live. Some customers have you know, custom printer drawdowns, right? Before, we just want you to make it again the same way. So there's a, you have a lot of flexibility in how you design your program. And it's really about how quickly do you move, want to move and what's your core strategy. Great. Well, I, that is the close of our presentation today. Thank you again, Mark, and thank you for joining us. As a reminder, you'll be receiving an email with a link to the video recording in the coming weeks. And be sure to visit brandspur.com to register for the next month's webinar with Ruth Levinson and Mike Leeds from SGK's client engagement team presenting how leading food and beverage brands aim to make the most of the new FDA label regulations. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.